If you're building an app with protected routes in Svelkit, then you've probably done something like this before. If the user or session is invalid and they try to access this route, we want to send them to the login page, right? Throwing an error here would be kind of weird because if my session expired and I didn't realize it, I don't want to be sent to an error page where I have to click off of that page to go to log in and then go back to the resource that I was trying to access, right? But even just doing this is a pretty subpar user experience. So let's just say that I try to access that page, the account page here. So I get redirected to the login page with no context, nothing. It's just like, hey, I guess I should log in. So I log in and now I'm brought back to the home page, not to the page I just tried to access. So then I go up here again. Okay, now I can access the page. So ideally what we wanna do is if we went to that account page as an unauthenticated user, we want to be notified as to what is wrong. Why can't I access that page? Okay, well you need to log in to access that page. And then once I do log in, I actually want to be redirected back to the resource that I was redirected from. So we can actually accomplish this fairly easy using something as simple as the URL. And if we come back into our code here, we just get rid of this redirect for the time being and we just console log the event.url and then we try to access that account page again. You're gonna see that we get a bunch of different information here, right? One of which is the path name, and we also get the search as well, which is the search param portion of the URL. So if I was to type in account question mark update equals true, then inside of my console, I'm gonna have the full path when I add the path name and the search, which is essentially where I wanna be redirected back to, right? And we wanna take into account any of these search params we might have because some of your other pages may have search params that you want to repopulate once the user logs in. So if we just construct something like this, we just say from URL is equal to event.url.path name plus event.url.search. And then we take a look at this. We can see that we're just getting slash account question mark update equals true, right? And this is where we want to be redirected back to after we log in. So what we can do is instead of just throwing a redirect to login, we can say throw redirect slash login question mark redirect to equals, and let's just make this a template string here, and we'll say from URL. So we're basically passing a search param or query param, whatever you want to call it, to our login routes when we're being redirected from this specific route. So then inside of our login route here, I just have a very simple setup here for the action. And when the user logs in, this action will be called, right? So when I click on submit, that's when this is called here. This is where I'm redirecting them back to the home page after a successful login. And this is where I want to redirect them back to where they came from. So instead of just throwing this redirect here, what we can do is we can actually grab that redirect to search param that we passed over. And then as a safety precaution to make sure that no one's passing some type of like full URL to our login page, because technically someone could have some link that someone clicks on that takes them to our site.com slash login redirect to their site. And then we'd have a user getting involved in some sort of a phishing situation where they may think they typed in the wrong information when really they just want them to enter their password again on their site. So what we can do to get around that is that if we start our route with slash, we know our cell kit knows that it's going to be, you know, local host or whatever domain our server is running at slash whatever, right? So as long as we don't leave it wide open to where someone could say HTTPS virus.com, then we're good to go. But right now we're already passing over that slash. So you could do this here or you could do this in your helper function. I'm just gonna do this here. So I'm gonna say if redirect to, so if this is good to go, then we're gonna throw a redirect 302 and then we're gonna open up some template strings here. We're gonna say slash first, right? So we keep it inside of our domain, redirect to, which means that we need to slice the first character off of this redirect to, which is gonna be slash whatever, right? Otherwise, we're just gonna throw a redirect to whatever your default is. In my case, it's gonna be the homepage, like so. So again, what we're doing here is forcing this redirect to to be from our domain. So even if someone was to pass in like a full malicious domain, it would end up being like localhost 5173 slash HTTPS virus.com, which in this case, it's gonna throw a 404 not found. It's not gonna take the user to this virus site or this phishing site, right? So that's a good precaution to put in place here. And that's kind of how we can restrict it to only allowing redirections to our site. Again, if you want to redirect elsewhere using the same type of method, then I suggest you find some type of way to validate the data that's being passed into that search param. So now when I go back to the homepage here, I go to account, I got redirected. We can see that the URL was populated with that updated search param. I log in. Now I'm brought to the account page. And had I had a query param there when I went to this page, so for example, if I log out again and I just go manually to slash account, question mark, update equals true, something like this, it doesn't matter, this is arbitrary, but you'll see that this is getting passed here as well. I log in. I've now been redirected with the full path here back to whatever resource that I was trying to access. And this may not seem like that big of a deal for something like a top level route, like account here, but if we had like items and then we had view, 
more details, and we just had a super nested route here, it would be really frustrating to get redirected potentially all the way back to the homepage just to find out you didn't have the permissions to access a specific resource or something of that sort, right? And we can actually make this a bit better. We can actually create some type of utility that will automatically construct this URL for us. So we could just set up a function called handle login redirect. So this will only be applicable to routes where we want to redirect the user to the login page, right? And what we can do is we can take in an event here, which is going to be of type request event. And then we can construct that redirect to URL with the event.url.pathname plus the event.url.search. And then we can just return a string with slash login redirect to redirect to like so. So now everywhere that we want to handle our route exactly like this, instead of having to construct it here, we can just say throw redirect handle login redirect and then pass the event in like this. And it will take care of doing the same thing for us. So if we test this out again, go to account. We can see that this was passed and we get redirected back to the account page. And there's one more thing that we can do to make this a little bit better, and that is to pass some type of context, some type of message along with that redirection so the user knows why they were redirected. For example, again, like I mentioned in the beginning, if I click on account, I'm expecting to go to the account page, but I'm getting brought to the login page without any type of notification or notice that I need to log in before I access that page. So what we can do there is we can actually pass some additional state, and we can do that inside of our utility function here. So let's just take in a message. This will be a string, and We'll set this to a default value of you must be logged in to access this page, but we could pass something custom if we wanted to here, right? But we don't have to. And then we could add an additional param here and say, and message equals message like so. And then inside of the login page, I'm just going to set up a message variable here. And then I'm going to add a reactive statement to assign message to the page URL search params message if there is one, otherwise it's going to be an empty string. And then if there's a message, I'm rendering out this alert at the top of the login page. So now if I try to go to the account page, we're going to see I get this nice alert. You must be logged into access this page. And then I could of course customize that message if I wanted to by passing in a custom message here. You are not allowed to access. Then I go back here again. We can see that my custom message gets passed here. So it's pretty cool. I feel like URL state isn't taken advantage of enough. And I think people often overlook it as an option to pass information between different, you know, server side functions in code. But I hope this tip has been useful to you all. I want to start kind of creating a few of these different videos where I find something pretty interesting that I think isn't widely adopted or taken advantage of yet, and then try to showcase it here on the channel. So if you have any suggestions or recommendations, please let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.